The Russian armed forces have reportedly shot down 13 Israeli missiles over Syrian airspace after the Israeli Air Force attempted to launch an attack on the city of Tartus in western Syria on the Mediterranean coast. Military Watch magazine reported this. It is noted that the report came from a number of Russian sources. The Russian military presence in Syria is heavily concentrated in the western province of Latakia, primarily around Kamaimim Air Base and a naval facility in the city of Tatus. Military Watch magazine says that both facilities have gained growing strategic importance for Russia in recent years, with the former having been expanded to accommodate strategic bombers able to deploy nuclear-capable missiles against NATO's southern flank. Although Russia has refrained from deploying its air defense systems to intercept Israeli, Turkish and Western missile attacks in the past, the sensitivity of the city of Tartus and surrounding areas makes it highly plausible that the country's air defense systems would be used to intervene. Russian air defense systems deployed at Khamaimim Air Base include the long-range S-400 and S-300 V-4, the medium-range BUKM-2 and the short-range Pantsir S, as well as various electronic warfare assets. Pantsir systems have been used extensively in the past to intercept attacks from Islamist insurgent groups, while Israeli cruise missile attacks on Syria have consistently used subsonic missiles, the S-400 and S-300 V-4 have proven capable of intercepting targets, traveling at hypersonic speeds of over Mach 8, Military Watch magazine says. Syrian army sources told Reuters that Syrian air defenses intercepted suspected Israeli missiles targeting the Mediterranean port city of Tartus after witnesses said they heard multiple explosions. According to the reliable SOAR resources, the Israeli Air Force defenses stationed in the Al Golan blocked an unknown object of unknown source where several missiles were fired from the Iron Dome, one of which landed in Syrian territory. It is noted that Israeli warplanes launched an airstrike targeting Matraba crossing which links al qusaya area in the Syrian side to the Lebanese territory, resulting in a number of casualties. It is noted that this was the first Israeli raid targeting Syrian territory since the beginning of Israel's last escalation of Lebanon. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and former President Donald Trump are meeting in New York amid rising questions about U.S. support for Ukraine. The GOP presidential nominee is facing accusations from his Democratic opponent Vice President Kamala Harris that he is advocating for Ukraine to surrender. Trump said Zelensky asked for the meeting at Trump Tower in New York. The meeting comes less than a day after Harris met with the Ukrainian leader and expressed unwavering support. Well, thank you very much. It's an honor to have the president with us. And he's been through a lot. He's been through a, a tremendous amount, like probably nobody else, almost nobody else in history, if we really get right down to it. And we're going to have a discussion and see what we can come up with. But a great honor to have you with thank us. You so thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank you so much for this meeting. Five, five years plus. Yeah. So we have, yes. Uh, we had meeting again here in New York in September, and now there are a lot of challenges, challenges in Ukraine, the United States. And of course, I want to to discuss with you. Uh, I think where we are together, I think we have common view that the war in Ukraine has to be stopped, and Putin can't win, and Ukrainians have to prevail. And I want to discuss with you the details of our plan and our victory. I think it's me or to both of us. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, it's very important to share to share all the plan, all our steps, how we can strengthen Ukraine. And of course, we have to decide it now because after November, we don't know who is. Only Americans decide who will be the president. But we understand that till November. We can't stop Putin. We have to do it. We will try on the battlefield with our heroic soldiers. But we understand that after November, we have to decide. And we hope that the strength of the United States will be very strong and we count on it. That's why I decided to meet with both candidates with all honor to them. Thank you. 
Uh, look, this is a meeting, and we have a big race going on right now. I guess 37 days left, and we're leading in the polls, and so we'll see how it all works out. Hopefully, it'll work out. But if it does, we're going to work very much with both parties to try and get this settled and get it worked out. Uh, it has to end at some point. It has to end. He's gone through hell, and this country has gone through hell like few countries have ever like it's happened anywhere. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. It's a terrible situation. We have a very good relationship, and I also have a very good relationship, as you know, with President Putin. And I think uh, if we win, I think we're going to get it resolved very quickly. Very well. I really think we're going to get it resolved. I hope we have more good relations. We're going to have. Oh, I see. Yeah. Do you think but, but, you know, it takes two to tango, you know, and we will, uh, we're going to have a good meeting today. And I think the fact that we're even together today is a very good sign, and hopefully uh, we'll have a good victory because uh, the other side wins. I don't think you're going to have victories with anything, to be honest with you. So we're going to sit down, just discuss it, and uh, if we have a, w a win, I think long before I, before January 20th, before I would take the presidency, it's January 20th. But long before that, I think that uh, we can work out something that's good for both sides. Thank you. Chris, thank you.